Going up Palm Drive to Main Quad is and will forever be like my personal favorite view of campus. And that was the one spot on campus when I would actually have to stop and like pinch myself. And be like, this is, this is somewhere that I go to school. The first thing I remember is having dozens and dozens of people that I didn't know shouting and cheering and saying, come to Stanford. And I remember thinking, wow, how wonderful and inclusive must this community be for someone who actually goes to school here. The Oval is a very special place on campus. It's just an amazing place for students to enjoy the beauty that is Stanford's campus. If you go out to the Oval on perhaps a Friday afternoon, you might see people setting up volleyball nets, people playing ultimate frisbee, people walking dogs, riding their bikes, picnicking. So especially when the weather is nice in the fall and the spring, it's definitely a space that is utilized by the community in a really, really great way. This is the area that connects the oval with uh, main quad. You'll see as well, we have some beautiful Rodan sculptures here. We have more of those over by the Cantor Art Center. So we're now entering main quad, which is the heart of Stanford's campus. It's also the home of our humanities and sciences department. Historically, there were four main departments in the quad, which is why it has four corners. Memorial Church is probably one of my favorite parts of the Stanford campus. And I think Memorial Church is special in that it was crafted from the beginning to be open to all students of all denominations and backgrounds. Jane Stanford was very intentional about making the main quad all connected under one roof, even though it, it houses a bunch of different departments. And that really represents the very interdisciplinary nature of my education so far. There isn't a huge divide between the humanities and STEM. So if you look at what students are doing in the main quad or in the science and engineering quad, you see people who are trying to solve really similar problems or achieve similar goals. So people are looking into questions of sustainability and making the world a better place and looking into aspects of human behavior. We're just all using different tools to do so. So this is the science and engineering quad. Science and Engineering Quad has a lot of really cool engineering aspects itself that are geared towards sustainability. One of the most special parts about the Engineering Quad is how it's designed with collaboration as its driving principle. And what that means is that the way that professors are organized throughout the quad is really unique. It's not just computer science in one building, chemical engineering in another building, etc. Professors are actually grouped by the problem that they're trying to solve. Stanford's motto is the winds of freedom blow. And the driving idea behind that has been to allow Stanford students to essentially pursue whatever academic interests they have. The Stanford undergraduate program calls itself a liberal arts program, meaning that um, you have two years to decide what you want to major in. So when you get to campus, you can kind of do whatever you want. I didn't take a single class in the same department my entire freshman year, which was super exciting. This is Stanford's largest library in a place that I spend a decent amount of my time, especially during finals. My favorite fact about Green Library is it also houses uh, something called the Special Collections, like a Yellow Pages first edition copy of uh, a novel written by John Steinbeck. They have a first edition of the original Star Wars script, which is super cool. I've also really, really loved the reading rooms in Green Library. There's two big ones. There's the Lane Reading Room, and my favorite is the Bender Room on the fifth floor, which is a really awesome place if you want to spend a few hours and just get lost in a book or writing a paper, finishing up work. Meyer Green is the perfect representation of how beautiful Stanford's open spaces are. So during spring quarter, when it's sunny outside, which is for, let's say, 80% of the year, these people hanging out on Meyer Green, they're reading a book, they're just lying down, they're talking with their friends, working and also enjoying the beauty that is Stanford's campus. The open space is really another thing that's distinctive about Stanford. And I think it just kind of puts me at ease. I could not think of another school that has better weather than Stanford. Coming from Connecticut, it was a huge, huge difference. I felt like just the weather alone was, you know, two classes of work lifted off of my shoulders. The O'Donohue Educational Farm is where 
they, it's a working farm, so they have a lot of uh, plants, vegetables, flowers. I also really appreciate the farm because it's a place where you can go and feel more connected to like the land, the earth, and also like think deeply and critically about issues like sustainability and the environment and how agriculture is so tied to a lot of the issues that I study in my classes too. So it's a very like communal space as well. So this is the row, uh, which stretches on for a very long while. Uh, we have lots of different types of housing on campus. So a lot of people, when they hear about the row at other universities, they might think of Greek life. And here at Stanford, it's very different. There is Greek life, Greek life about 20 to 25 percent of students are involved in Greek life, but there's also a ton of other opportunities to find cool living communities. We have an Asian themed house, we have a human biology themed house, a humanities house. Um, there are houses that have unofficial themes, like the art themed house, um, a social justice themed house. Stanford's freshman year living experience is the thing that the university does best. The level of love and support and community that you have within your freshman dorm really is the foundation of your freshman year and something that makes it so, so incredible. I think one of the biggest concerns I had coming to Stanford was, will I fit in? Am I worth it? Um, within the first week, that was a swatch just because the people in my dorm were so excited about me and the things in my life that really made me feel at home. So uh, this right here is White Plaza. It's kind of like the student center of campus. We have the Claw, which is one of our, probably our most famous fountain where students like to swim on hot days, uh, and especially after finals. One of the biggest events that happens at White Plaza is called Activities Fair, which is basically when all of Stanford's clubs and organizations line up within this one stretch of Stanford's campus and try to get you to join their respective club organization. In addition to the four ethnic themed dormants that we offer, there are a lot of clubs that are just cultural that really focus on celebrating the culture of certain communities and finding people who have similar experiences to you. I think this is one of the times where all of the different diverse experiences and passions at Stanford really come to light. Stanford students are some of the smartest people in the world, but no one takes themselves too seriously. You're surrounded by this group of people who are so intelligent, but also love to have fun, love to experiment and try new things. Athletics, something that really sets Stanford apart from a lot of other universities that are also really high caliber academically, because I think athletics kind of show how Stanford students can succeed in literally everything they do. And I think that is the hallmark of a great Stanford student. I think what's really cool about Stanford is that Athletes are really immersed in the overall community, so so many of my friends are varsity athletes and because of that it's really easy to be a sports fan when you have friends on the team. The Stanford Football Stadium is a really fun space. It gives the whole school a chance on Saturdays to come out to one space together and support a team. You definitely feel the sort of collective excitement around the energy of the band, the dollies, the tree, all these cool mascots that you get that sense of, of school spirit. It's pretty electric. Stanford students, when football is going really well, they get really hyped. People will push in and there'll be a ton of people and just having everyone feel that energy is really, really fun. And that's probably like the feeling that I'll, I associate most with football games. Windover is the kind of main contemplative space on campus. Interestingly, the reason Memorial Church was built is that Jane Stanford wanted a place for contemplation on Stanford because she was afraid that there was so much science and technology that people were kind of losing sense of their moral and spiritual compass. And so Windover is kind of an effort to continue that into the contemporary age. So a lot of students will use Windover as a place to just relax and be away from everybody. You can just go there and meditate and really ground yourself. I think that a lot of people find that this really helps with both their spiritual and their mental growth because it's really a space that's accessible to a lot of people and really allows you that break in the day that you might need sometimes. So we're walking into the arts district of campus, 
I think it's one of my favorite places to be just because it's so beautiful. This is McMurtry Arts Building. It is the go-to place for anyone interested in art history or art practice. You have on the bottom half the what are called dark arts, so things like photography and film. And then on the top half of McMurtry, you can find the light arts, so things like painting or sculpting or drawing. And those classes take place there, as well as the architecture program. Passing the Rodin Sculpture Garden, you'll see the Cantor Arts Museum. Uh, the Cantor Arts Museum is one of my favorite places on campus. We'll have big events with new art coming in over some sort of theme, which is nice for students here, just because you get to see new art. The Bing Concert Hall is really awesome. One thing I like about it is, although it is kind of this very fancy, very formal concert venue, they host stand-up comedy, they host much more informal talks, as well as people like Yo-Yo Ma, um, and all the tickets are subsidized for students, so um, it's really affordable, really accessible. It's really, really easy to just bike down Palm Drive. It also leads to the Caltrain station, which is really great because the Caltrain opens up the exploration of the entire Bay Area. So I go up to the city a lot as well. I take the Caltrain, I drive, etc. It's really a fantastic place to be close to while still having the comfort of being on a close campus. I never lived close to the ocean. Being able to access the beach in Half Moon Bay relatively easily from campus, like only a 30 minute to an hour drive, was really exciting for me. I know I definitely took advantage of that. I think the opportunities and experiences I've had at this university have really shaped the person I've become and enabled me to grow in ways that I didn't necessarily expect. It's pretty crazy to think about like just how much I've not only gained from this university, but like just those communities and just how much of a home it really has become for me. I remember going to convocation at Main Quad, and then everyone stood up to sing the Stanford song. And I looked around and so many people were in tears. For myself, and I think for a lot of people, that was when it really hit us that we were about to begin the next four years of our journey here. And of course, in the same location four years later, that's where you have senior night on the quad. That's a way for you to sort of look back and reflect on all of the experiences you've had, the friends you've made since that moment too. So main quad is sort of the beginning and the end, but also the beginning of your rest of your life after Stanford.